start when you're ready. Okay, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to present a paper titled um, Model Contrastive Pattern Learning. Uh, here is the paper that published uh, CVPR last year. So um, here is the outline. First, I will introduce the motivation and then uh, trying to uh, discuss their proposed method called the Model Contrastive Pattern Learning and show the experiment. Plan. Finally, I will conclude the paper. So um, as we all know, the federal learning um, can bring a lot of uh, benefits such as um, of um, uh, keep the keep the model privacy and learn the fresh real world data. Uh, and here is the key challenge, one of the key challenge in the federal learning. And the, the heterogeneous in terms of the data heterogeneous and the system heterogeneous as showing in the following. Since the model, uh, since each client may have a uh, different type of uh, data distributions, so using the local training step uh, may lead the local model uh, kind of far away from the global uh, federated aggregate model. So it will slow down the model training. <laughs> and it may affect the final model accuracy. And for the system heterogeneous, since the device uh, would have different capabilities, so the the slow, uh, slow device will uh, slow down the model's update time. So um, as shown here. So in this paper, they, uh, they mainly focus on the first heterogeneous, which is the NID data settings. Um, given the current work to tackle the NID data, uh, they mainly focus on the two steps uh, they can uh, they can work on two uh, kind of uh, different steps. First is for the local updates uh, part, which is the step two. Um, uh, the, the existing works like the fat prox or the scoff scaffold usually are uh, are focused on how to modify the local training loss. So for the Fat prox, they are directly adding the, the regularization terms to directly limit the local update. And for Scofield, they were introducing additional control variables to correct the model update by uh, using the approach similar to the variance reductions. Um, however, those existing uh, approach, later I will show, uh, in their experiment, they will show that this uh, study has a very limited advantage over the federal learning in the deep learning models. So uh, given this uh, limitation for the existing work, uh, the, this paper are trying to uh, design the new local loss functions and trying to uh, help reduce the, the NID uh, issues and to improve the global model's accuracy. And uh, another direction you can uh, work on uh, is to trying to modify the uh, aggregation step in the, in the third stage, uh, in the fourth stage where the global model, the, the sorry, the global server would aggregate the, the, the model from different users. So here is the existing approach that they're using to um, modify the global update rules. For example, like adding the momentums or using some Bayesian uh, parameters to uh, find, match, and aggregate weight linear-wise. 
And uh, so in this paper, they're trying to use the 9D data and design in the local update stage by uh, trying to solve this issue with a new uh, respect, which is the modal representations. Uh, from the previous two works, they mainly focus on how to do the local training update on the modal weights. So instead of that, they are using the modal representation to guide the local trainings. And they proposed a method called Moon, which uh, using the constructive learning um, to compare the representation learned by different models. So next I will uh, introduce their proposed method. Um, before going to the details, uh, I will first introduce some background about the contrastive, uh, contrastive learnings. Uh, the contrastive learnings basically is uh, following a very uh, uh, simple intuition is that if the, uh, if the image are similar, so uh, their distance mapping to the latent space should be very small. And the dissimilar the image uh, mapping to the latent space, their distance should be far away. <clears throat> um, the key challenge in the contrastive learning is to create the positive and the negative samples that allows the uh, model to learn the, the, the representation of different image. And uh, recently, uh, there is a work called the same CLR. They using a very simple ways uh, to uh, const uh, to generate the the positive samples and. Uh, uh, they compare the, they using the data augmentation to generate two type of uh, augmented image uh, and compare the distance between the augmented image to learn the representations. And the, um, their idea is also very simple. So the, um, the input from different angles of the same image source should be the, they, they should share this similar or even the same uh, data representations. So after comparing those uh, in the latent space, the distance between ZI and ZJ should be very small. Um, and uh, their empirical result shows a very good uh, uh, high accuracy of uh, using their methods. So they kind of inspire of this design to uh, improve the factor learnings in the 9D settings. So uh, next is their uh, intuitive uh, observations is that um, we know that if the, if the model is trained by the whole network, uh, the whole uh, data set, they can have a very good uh, learned, a very good representation as shown in the figure eight. We can see four different class uh, mapping to the, uh, when after we visualize their data the, the features, you can see there's uh, clear boundaries between uh, different class. So we are able to do the, uh, we are able to perform high uh, accurate predictions. However, uh, if we only have like the school subset, uh, they train the local model on the partial <clears throat> data set of the CIFAR 10. And as you can see, the local model actually cannot learn uh, very well the representation since uh, most of the features of different class are mixed together and cannot distinguish. And this is the reason why people want to use the federal learning so that we can improve the accuracy of the local model when we don't have enough of the data. So, So actually the federated global model can actually learn the better compared with these local models. So if we consider the, the CIFAR-10, they are uh, partitioned by, uh, divided to 10 subset and trained individually with 10 clients. And we can get this federated average global model. Actually, we can see the feature from uh, some of the class are able to distinguish from uh, others. So the global model do learn better than the local ones. But after we receive the global model, 
the each client will further train the global model based on their uh, scored subset. And as you can see, actually the local training phase um, will lead the model to a worse representation. And as you can see, because for the point with the same colors, they are more divergent. And uh, further, you can see the color is shift after you do the local training phase. So that uh, it means that for the local training, uh, if we just train on the subset of the data set, it actually learn worse. So in order to control such shift and uh, keeps the better representation from the global model, we need to control this shift. So the main idea of this proposed uh, method is trying to uh, to decrease the distance between the representation learned by the global models. That to in order to achieve that, um, they are mapping their idea to the con contrastive learning, which basically we can treat the global better the average model as the positive model representation. And the, the local model from the previous round as the negative model or representation. So that's using the similar idea from the contrastive learning, we are able to learn the representation close to the global one because they can they do learn the better uh, model features here. So, um, so compare with the, the original one, uh, there's a slightly difference uh, in the paper they are proposed the model contrastive. Is first, they are supervised learnings. Uh, so the original one is mainly for unsupervised learning that without the data labels, we are going to use the data augmentation to learn the features of different image. So they they trying to focus on extract the feature from the data samples. Uh, but in this paper, since we're dealing with the model shift, so we directly uh, trying to uh, let the local model to learn to compare the, the representation from different models. So we have the, the original global model and the compare with our uh, local model that to be trained. So we need to um, minimize the distance between these two. So um, next I will introduce uh, their method. Uh, so for the local training phase, uh, they actually trying to uh, slightly modify the, the network architecture and design the new loss function here. So in order to learn the model representation, we actually need to keep two copies. First is the copies from the, uh, the feature from the last uh, global models. Uh, the T minus one, the T here represent the communication rounds index. So we need to uh, we need to keep the copies from the previous uh, local models, and also we we received the feature from the uh, global models, and the, as the Z global, and also we have the the, the newly trained model uh, representation as Z. So the constructive uh, loss can be described as the following. Uh, they directly use the, uh, the loss function that that designed from the previous uh, papers. And, uh, and also because uh, not only they consider the constructive loss, they also consider the supervised learning uh, from the traditional way. So we have the new function by simply adding the hyperparameter mu here to uh, construct the, this new type of local loss. And uh, as you can see, their, uh, their new loss function actually is uh, can reduce to the traditional better than average if there is no uh, non-ID issues. So if there is no non-ID issues, the the representation between the <clears throat> local model and the global model should be the same. And in this way, the, the second term will reduce to a constant. 
and they are recovered from the traditional federated average with uh, IAD scenarios. And here is the, the overall algorithm. So uh, they just mainly, the key difference is from the local training or the rest of the steps is similar for the traditional federated average. Uh, for the local training, they just first uh, do the, uh, do the cross entropy loss. And then using this uh, black box, Actually, is a nonlinear transfer to uh, to calculate the, the the representation features here as the vectors. So you can guess the modal representation uh, of the positive uh, pairs and the negative pairs. And you calculate the loss, then using this new loss function to update the models. And uh, next, I will show the experiment result. Here is the description of their experiment setup. Uh, they uh, they able to uh, use the PyTorch to implement their proposed method, and it's uh, public in the GitHub. And they consider the three uh, visual image classification tasks. And for the encoder, which is to allow them to extract the features, so for CEPHA 10, they use two uh, CN models. And for CEPHA 100 and tiny image nets, they use the ResNet 15. And for the non-ID settings, they using the Rochester distribution to generate the unbalanced data set for different uh, class of each of the data sets. And so the beta here is the parameter of the distribution. The smaller, which means the, the, the unbalanced data is, uh, uh, sorry, the, the smaller parameter means the, the data are highly uh, unbalanced. And they also use the MLP for the projection to map the representation to a latent space so that they can calculate the distance uh, to calculate the similarity between the possible positive labor and the negative labors. And they also compare with uh, four different uh, baseline schemes. And here is the first evaluation. As you can see for different tasks, uh, they can clearly outperform all other baselines. And as you can see for the scar field, when they are using the deep uh, neural networks to do the training, they actually have a very bad performance. And next is the, they show the convergence rate. As you can see, the, the fat bar have very low accuracy. And for the fat prox, uh, they kind of fine tune the hyperparameter of their proposed method to control the regularization terms. And as you can see, the best one, uh, they claim that because the best mu is a very small number, so the performance is very similar to the federated average, especially in the uh, in all of the three cases, they have a very similar performance after the have better average, but uh, their performance is uh, obviously and clearly outperform all the, the baselines. And they also report the, the communication around to achieve the same accuracy. As you can see, their method is much more communication efficient and they have obtained a high accuracy. Yes. And they also examine the, the impact of the local, uh, local iteration numbers, local epoch numbers. And as you can see in the 90 settings, if we can, if we set the local update is a very large, we can see the accuracy was dropped dramatically, uh, especially in the, in the baselines. And uh, compared with those baselines, their accuracy drop is slightly small. So they, they can effectively uh, navigate, uh, mitigate the effect by learning the model representations. 
And also they consider the scalabilities of their work. They consider the, the full parties, participation in the 15 parties and the partial participation in the 100 parties. As you can see, uh, their master clay uh, can achieve the higher accuracy in much uh, less communication rounds um, compared with the, the, the baseline. And in terms of the diversity, um, because their, their method aim to solve the non-ID data. So uh, they also have a very high accuracy compared with others. And uh, even with, with beta equals to five, which means that the, the, the heterogeneous, it's, uh, there's more tend to be ID data set. And as you can see, the federal average actually can outperform the, the baselines. Uh, of the Fed prox and the scoff field. And uh, the final one is this, uh, they also report the, the average training time per round because they are using the different uh, loss functions. So you can see that for a tiny image uh, that they, they're training time is longer, much longer than the rest of the street, but compared with uh, less complicated tasks, um, they can, their method can be uh, affordable. And uh, because of their trainings uh, much faster, so their overall training time for the cipher can be, can reduce the, the training times. Uh, yes, and um, So here it's the conclusion. Uh, basically, they propose a very simple, lightweight uh, federal learning algorithm to uh, address the non-ID data issues by using the model contrasted learning. And that's it. So any questions? Um, hello, I, can you go back to the, uh, what you explained about the contrast, model contrasted learning? Uh, I believe is that there were, they're showing one is the uh, X augmentation, the other one is the, the W augmentation. Yeah, yeah, this one, so, so is the W here the same as the one in sim CLR? Like, do they mean the same? The w here? Yes. Okay, because they, um, yeah, I, I, I think they want to say is uh, when, you, when you use the same data to train the, the model, so the model should have this to learn the similar representations here. So the WT here is the global model, the global representation from the, from the servers. And the WI is what you want to train the model. And uh, using the same uh, data samples, you should get the, the same representations. So they want to like uh, allow to guide the local training close to the global one because uh, as the experiments show, the global have a better representation. Okay, so on the left side, they augment on the data and the right side, they augment on the models. Yes, yes, they are, uh, yes. They are. Uh, okay, so do they, uh, so in terms of Z, are like the results the same? Do they have the same um, uh, structure-wise uh, results? Mm. Like for example, if you do the X and and you go to, uh, in SimCR, you you use the X for data set and then you go to this model and you get a Z. And uh, on the Moon, uh, with with Moon, you do basically a, a similar thing. So I, I'm just asking. Uh, just um, 
wondering if those two Z or ZI, ZJ, and Z global, Z local, are they, do they have this um, similar result? Um, here they more like in the centralized way to do the trainings without any labels. So I think it's different parts. Okay, thank you. So Ray, I have one question here. So here for this uh, maximize agreement, uh, I'm confused. Uh, so in the previous slides, you have one example, you show that, uh, so for the like the positive sample, they want to minimize the distance. And for the negative sam uh, sample, they want to maximize the distance, right? But uh, here for this maximum agreement, what does it mean? They want to make uh, these two models to be close, to be similar? Yes, they want to, they want local model to be similar to the global one. But if that uh, here you define one is positive, another is negative. So intuitively, so like we want to just like uh, keep closer to the positive and uh, keep far away from negative. But here yes. it seems that uh, you want to make this positive and negative to be close. It's oh, yeah, this is from the previous round. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to like you model don't want to close to the previous round, but close to the like here it should be t minus one local model, and here the global model should be t. Okay. Oh, oh I see. Yeah, you go go back to that so that model slide. Okay. So the here at the top of this x, this step is the new training, right? It will yes, yes. become a new model. Okay. I see. I got this. Yeah, and also, yeah, another question is that so you, uh, in the results for, the, for this diversity, so it seems that uh, like uh, for this uh, federal energy and for the uh, federal proxy, it's like this, uh, like uh, <coughs> for different diversity, the performance also does not change too much. So, and also for this new design, it's just like two percentage, three percentage. So how can we say that it's good enough? It can, it, I think the federal energy is already robust to this diversity, right? Mm -hmm. And also you can see like the, uh, his performance only change like three percentage. But for this move, it's performance change four percentage. I think the federal energy seem, seems to be more robust uh, to this diversity. So I cannot uh, I like uh, fully understand this uh, for this table, what do they want to sell? They just want to show that uh, they also have the high performance. Mm, yeah, I think they just want to show that they can achieve a better performance. The accuracy is higher than the average. I think just what they want to show. Okay, I see. Yeah, and also, so that's one figure for that uh, tiny image net. It seems all the performance is around only 20, like 20% 20 or 30. I want to know like um, for this kind of performance, so it's, do you think it's useful? But this one? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And this uh, this uh, what I feel confused. So it's only twenty something. Even it's the top one accuracy, but I think this twenty five or twenty three. How to say this result is useless. Yeah, I think, yes, I think you're right. Um, okay, that's why it's, uh, it's not a question. So I just uh, like uh, want to point out this. Uh, sometimes I cannot understand this, uh, this performance. Mm -hmm. mm. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Ray, I got a quick question. So 
there are multiple papers, right? So use the global model uh, to help the local model to, to rectify local model or say to help to improve local model, local model training or local model update, right? Mm -hmm. um, for example, simple one is you just use the, you know, distance to measure those global model, between global model and local model, right? So then if we close to global model, uh, we update, if, if not, we just uh, discard that, something like that, right? So does this paper compare, uh, I know they compare with the federal average procs and this thing, but those paper mainly they deal with an ID, right? It's not like uh, use a global model to help the local model updates. You, you, you know what I mean? So does this paper compare their scheme with um, the other similar scheme? It, it, it seems like this one, yeah. First of all, it works on, on non-ID data, but it also it's like it use the global model to help the local model, right? To rectify, to help to crack the local model training or, or guide local model training, stuff like this, right? Mm -hmm. But this is not the only paper talking about this. You know that, right? So there are multiple fair learning paper. They have similar idea. You use a global model or even last run global model to guide, you know, the local model training or something. Um, to guide the global. Yeah, this one is like a contrastive uh, learning or whatever. It's just like, you know, you use a global model kind of guide the local model training, right? To make sure it's uh, kind of close to you or something. Uh, yeah, but they ultimately want to have a global model. What, what do you mean they automatically help global model? For, for this one, they just mm. try to train a good global, a single global model. Yeah, for the other paper, it's a similar things. For example, okay, I, I give a very simple example. For example, there were paper talking about, okay, if your local model updates is kind of uh, far away from global model direction uh, yeah. or something, yeah, you give it up, right? So you yeah. discard those updates. You, you only pick up those, uh, you know, updates close to the global model training direction, right? Something like that. I, I think yeah. this paper, basically idea, I mean, we leave a long non-ID part, okay? We only talk about use a global model to help or guide the local model training part. Uh, that's similar. They should, they should compare their scheme with, um, with those kind of scheme as well. Mm -hmm. But obviously yeah. they didn't. They, didn't they, they only compare with the, the scheme that changed the local loss. They didn't compare with the, the previous state they talk about, the, like they modified the, the aggregation rules schemes. No, they just only compare with the. the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the things I mentioned there, yeah, it belongs yeah. to modify the aggregation rules. Yes, yes. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, they don't, don't compare with it those schemes as they claim they can like build on top of their schemes. I, I think they don't compare with those, uh, the, the, the other existing work, but only compare with the, the two schemes, the local training. Did they mention any reason for that? I think from very high level, big picture point of view, uh, they're doing very similar thing. <laughs> Mm. I mean, they use a different approach, yeah. definitely. Some people use a divergence, some people use this, some people use the, you know, the, the, the call sign or something. Uh, basically, they use, they're doing similar things, right? I think so why, they can yeah. couple together. Maybe after you do this training, you can disperse. Like, they can combine with those schemes. So this is probably the reason they don't. What do you mean by they can couple together? Uh. Like um, uh, here, they introduce those schemes that's uh -huh. 
they also do the non-ID, but they just do it in the globe, uh, the server's aggregation rules. So they basically don't compare with those schemes because they say uh, you can like you can use their uh, method and also use uh, these schemes to to change the rules update in the aggregation in, in the server side. So it's actually you can combine this algorithm together. You, you they just change the the training in the local update stage. And uh, you can like, on top of that, you can further uh, change the aggregation rules. So the, it, is, it will be uh, the new schemes. So they don't uh, independently to compare with those schemes. They just say that is this, like they can combine this together. Oh, what you're saying that the things I am mentioning is like, uh... Uh, we give a metric to select uh, which kind of model updates, you know, we should pick up, right? Uh, yeah. If it's close to a global model, we pick it up. It's like an aggregation rule. But here in their paper, it's like um, they, they use a global model to kind of refine their local training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just modify the local update space. So they only compare with this two things. Okay. Oh, could you go to the just the main idea page? Yeah, this one. No, this one? No, no. Probably not, not, no, the, the weight one. Yeah, the one Dr. Ryan asked question about. This one? Uh, no, 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 previous one, previous one. Yeah. This one? No, 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 no. no next page, the page Dr. Ryan uh, asked a question. Here? Uh, yeah. Okay. Let me, let me try. So here, if I get a global model, I do some um, local data augmentation or weight augmentation? No. Or no, no, no. You, you just keep the weight and you use your own local data sample to do, to oh, re do the representation. Yes. Uh, and when you do the training, you try to make this uh, WIT, Representation, the they're close to the, the, the yeah global. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, it's like you use your global model to guide the local training. Okay. So, so Rui has another question. So now you have multiple local uh, clients. So how to, but here is just to, okay, one global left is a global model, right is one local, okay, it's easy to maximize the government. But uh, if you like, you have 10 local client and you have one global model, how to make sure this, uh, all of them can like, uh, maximize the agreement. It seems they did not show how to make this work right. You mean because of the local is different? So how to yeah. with this global one? Yeah, because you have multiple, like we say, like you have a 10 local model. Yeah. So because the global model, as they showing here, the global model is contained the like the representation from all the clients. So they just extract the better features. So you just want to learn a better feature from, from this one global model. It's enough. Um, so it will like um, uh, maximize the agreement between the global model and the one local model, or it will yes. be for this global model and all of the local model. Yeah, they kind of push all the global local model towards this global one. Okay. So Ray, can I check the loss function, the final loss function they have? Um, compare with the general 
federal federal average they add a at the right part right okay yes the second term the second term they want to make it okay the second term is exactly like you said you want to push the local model training um close to the global model because yes. the global model aggregated everything aggregated everything from the other all the uh, okay, information from the okay. yes okay Okay. Hmm. It's interesting. It's just like um hmm. just like the guide, okay, but it's not like a traditional federal average guide, it's more than that. Right? So I, I give uh it's like I give more constraint, right? Training. I want to. Um, it's not more. Yeah. Because mm. they basically based on their the visualization results, so they may they only do the experiment on the image task. They only do that on the image task. Yeah, yeah. All the seven ten seven uh, one hundred and the image. Task. I need oh, okay. Okay. because of their observation, you can, you are able to visualize the, the features like that. So, oh, but for general data, they, they don't have this property. They don't do the experiment on the general case. So it probably is like the, you can do further experiments on whether the other data Task or other tasks are sharing the like the similar observations, and you can use their uh, approach to improve the model. Yeah, but conceptually, what do you think? I think uh, conceptually, it should work for mm -hmm. work for all the data, right? Yeah, it should be. Yeah, because uh, also they claim because uh, because they're. Their method is focused on the model representations, so it may not con only constrain to the image, like the image visual task. Because mm. mm. the traditional contrastive learning is basically a rely on this visual representations. But you can also do like in the language models or something. So yeah, they have different uh, like different schemes for different tasks. And here the scene CLR is like basically focused on the image task or visual task today. Mm. I think, yes. Mm. Okay. So did they address anything related to the System heterogeneity. I think they mentioned somewhere about the about the his system heterogeneity, right? Yeah, yeah. But how would they about this further this discuss one. that? No, 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 they, no, they don't. Oh, okay. Hmm. Although it's a simple constraint, but uh. It's very, it's very interesting. Any other questions? Uh, hi, Rhea. Uh, can you explain again why their method uh, outperforms the existing approaches? Uh, as you mentioned, we can uh, easily add a regularization term in the loss function, and we can also keep the uh, local model close to the global one. So why their method perform better? I think because they extract the representation as they, they learn the features. Uh, so why the feature wise uh, based approach methods outperform the just as a uh, uh, yes. Uh, it's not since we can also bond the distance between the model parameters. So what, what's the benefit if we bound the distance between the features? Mm. 
that's a very good question. Yes, I am still wondering the same thing, but um. Mm, Yes, yeah, since we, we, uh, in the existing approaches, we have a um, very, we, we have many similar, similar papers to tackle yes. the same issue. Yes. 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 Um, for the features. Um, But did they compare with the scheme? I think they don't, right? Well, they do. They compare with the fat prox. They just. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, they do the, the like aggregate the weight. Um, I'm not sure, but mm -hmm. the contrast learning, because they just directly uh, learn the the feature, uh, the the representation of the data, they say that it will contain much more information because uh, when you specify the particular loss, they were targeted on the specific task, so they will lose some information. Um, it's just I'm guessing it's because they can learn the representation that contain more information because they just focus on the data itself not the task. So probably uh, using the contrastive, they can extract uh, more informative features. Just um, this is, I'm guessing, it's maybe. Um, if we use this kind of loss function, right? Use a cross entropy of this kind of thing. Um, it's better than you use, uh, say, divergence based, uh, you know, you, you just evaluate the weight, the divergence stuff like that, right? Distance divergence is better than one because uh, this one is based on the feature and the feature is uh, kind of uh, data specific. But weight is more like, um, you know, model specific. Are you talk, talk about something like this? So if we it's use... just my guess because the weight is like directly you related to the task, the supervised loss there. Um, but I'm not very quite sure the, the benefit there. Okay, so so for the general contractive learning, do we focus on the model or the, the feature of data? Uh, the general because they are unsupervised. So they just focus on the data itself. Like um uh, they don't have the, the cross entropy loss like here because they are unsupervised learning. So they just trying to learn the representation of this different image. So they say because of the, uh, the red, red bar, actually you can extract more valuable features mm -hmm. using this, like the, the orange one, you kind of lost some of the information because you want to keep those information related to your task. So you, you kind of lose some of the information there. Okay. Okay. But still, can we do some comparison afterwards to, I think they mentioned something like this, right? In their paper. It's because the traditional like one, uh, after you do the training, after like mm -hmm. you get the blue, red and blue line, mm -hmm. uh, do the constructive training, you can use this red one to do other uh, tasks. You can do easily transfer learning to, to, towards different tasks. But I think uh, the red, the red uh, part, it will maintain a lot of uh, information about your data. So I think it might be like benefit because you contain uh, many of the features there. So um, the contrastive learning, basically you can use for the like pre-training stage. However, if we use a KL divergence, for example, that, that, that's gonna be task uh, independent or data independent, right? That, that's, that's what you're trying to say. Jia Hao share the paper. Here, this paper, they they said this paper, 
as a baseline, they have some comparison with the dis desolation, better proc, something, yeah. Maybe that's what they want, right? Uh, of the spammer comparison. Where is their loss function? Let me check. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Their loss function is like KL, right? So, what do they say? Their, their performance is better than this one? Uh, sometimes it's better than others, and uh, sometimes it's not. Not always. You can see yeah, you know, roughly roughly checking they only use uh, the KL to replace the cross entropy and uh, they did some uh, knowledge transfer stuff. Uh, knowledge distribution stuff, okay. Well, I think we can stop recording and then we can do further discussion. <laughs>